Uh, Anyang Hasayo, Korea. My name is Derek Silva. I am the Global Community Manager for ORCID. I manage ORCID's Telegram group, subreddit, and I coordinate with our global teams in Korea, China, and Japan. Uh, ORCID was founded in 2017 when Dr. Stephen Waterhouse identified that things like freedom, uh, both online and offline, were persistently being taken away from us. Uh, whether you live in a developed country like Korea or Canada, like myself, uh, or a developing nation like Brazil or in India, more and more freedoms are being stripped away, which makes it harder for you to live your life uh, the way you want to. So as a partner at Pantera Capital, uh, Dr. Waterhouse was well aware of emerging options like Ethereum and other blockchains that could help solve this problem through more private mechanisms. Uh, so he got together with luminaries like Jay Sork Freeman, a name you might know well, and Brian Fox, along with Gustav Simonson to found ORCID and begin building the technology that would allow for private payments for various services uh, powered by blockchain. ORCID's mission is to offer the ability to make private payments on a pay-as-you-go basis possible on blockchains. So the goal is to make it possible for you to access decentralized marketplaces for various services where the underlying service providers are effectively competing for your business by offering the best service at the best price, all powered by scalable payments secured by blockchains. The initial focus has been on virtual private network solutions where we are pretty close to being able to say version one is complete. It's always a really scary thing for a software developer to say like, yes, this is version one. <laughs> um, but we're really close to having version one uh, done across both the clients and the server software. This is extremely important to the co-founders and really the whole team because our freedom has been reduced day by day across the web and our privacy is continually reduced when we're offline as well. If you go to the mall, you've, you're probably caught on video surveillance. Uh, we know that there are some countries where sophisticated video surveillance is so prevalent and so advanced that even wearing a mask doesn't protect you. We find it unacceptable uh, that normal people can't go about their lives without technology getting in the way and possibly me possibly making your life less secure because all that data about you is often available to many people uh, like even private security companies with little oversight and it really is ripe for abuse so at the very least for the things you're doing online ORCID offers you a level of security and privacy that has been really hard to attain thus far, unless you were incredibly wealthy or incredibly smart. So with uh, pseudonymous accounts that can only be tied back to an Ethereum wallet address, today you can access a decentralized VPN marketplace where the service providers don't know who you are or what you're using their bandwidth for. The iOS, macOS, and Android apps are all available now and they work well. Uh, the Windows and Linux clients are in beta form. The server software works, works well and has been deployed by a number of partners in ORCID's list of partners, uh, the default curator, as we call it. Um, but it can still use some tweaking to enhance performance further. After the team is satisfied with the VPN, we'll start looking at other services to bring to, to, bring to the decentralized marketplace. Uh, and also look for others to help in that journey. Uh, we shouldn't do this alone. We don't want to do it alone. We know that there are lots of other people who care about this and we want them to be involved. Uh, the more people using ORCID, the more decentralized the network is, and we all benefit from that. Uh, right now, the focus is on native applications for each platform. Uh, we feel that that's best because an app encrypts all the traffic on your device and routes it through the VPN, not just your web traffic. So if you need to call someone, you need to access your email, maybe you're on vacation somewhere, uh, you need to upload a file over FTP, that's not a web, um, uh, a web based traffic. Uh, maybe you need to access a server's command line, that's port 22, also not the web. Uh, or maybe you wanna watch uh, your favorite video platform because you're not at home right now. 
uh, all of that traffic gets routed through ORCID because it's an app that encrypts all of the traffic on your device. So I'm not saying that building a browser extension or our own browser is completely out of the question, but I think it would make a lot more sense to partner with like-minded teams who can embed ORCID's technology into their own platforms instead. That, that's really the way that this should happen, you know, open source technology, working with others, uh, as opposed to trying to uh, uh, shoehorn ORCID into specific places or, you know, completely reinvent the wheel, to use uh, uh, an English uh, phrase, where uh, there are lots of really good browsers already out there, even some privacy focused browsers. I think it would be much easier to just put ORCID into those, um, maybe through a browser extension. <laughs> um, rather than, than build a whole new browser. This is a really good question. Uh, ultimately, it should be possible for you to access or even provide a variety of services across ORCID's network. Uh, that could be storage, VPN, which of course is running today, a voice over IP calls, maybe even video game streaming, uh, or other services where payment streaming uh, across ORCID's nano payment smart contract can be done on a byte by byte, by byte basis uh, or some other um, micro payment or nano payment um, uh, form. So we could envision even like newspapers offering payments on a per article basis so that you pay for the article that you've read or maybe even each paragraph that you've read instead of paying a, a whole monthly subscription that maybe you're not taking fully advantage of. So the current focus is on finishing the Windows and Linux clients. Obviously that's really important and making the server software more efficient and perform better so that it's really ready for non-partners to deploy and start offering their own bandwidth, bandwidth as well. That's something I'm really interested in doing. Lots of people in ORCID's community really, really want to get on and, uh, and there's no minimum to stake. So as long as you have a computer connected to the internet somewhere, this will be available to just about anyone. Uh, the earning potential for non-partners is important here as well uh, because it allows almost anyone in the world to sell their excess bandwidth to Orca's users. So whether you're in Korea or Japan or Uganda, South Africa, Canada, Brazil, uh, the US, wherever, uh, it's something you'll be able to use and hopefully actually earn a little bit of income from uh, or at least supplement your, your uh, ISP's costs. Uh, and of course, uh, in-app purchases, those need to be made available to non-Apple devices and users. Um, we've also heard uh, a number of people come to us with uh, the idea to embed ORCID's VPN protocol into routers so that it can protect all the traffic in your house or your business. Uh, we would love to see that happen, uh, and we're definitely open to taking community contributions to make ORCID work on open source router firmware like DDWRT, OpenWRT, Tomato, or, or any others that are out there. Yeah, not just Android, uh, Windows, Linux, uh, you know, those, those two, and maybe even uh, uh, iOS and macOS purchases outside the App Store. Uh, I think you can look forward to this in 2021. Uh, we know this is really important for mainstream adoption because not everyone wants to learn how to create and maintain an Ethereum wallet. And frankly, we don't expect them to either. Uh, Apple's payments restrictions are really tight, as many of you probably know. If you've ever built an app and, and embedded payments uh, options in there, you'll have run into this already with uh, uh, App Store's guidelines uh, for, for payments and, of course, that 30% cut that Apple takes. So the restrictions on payment solutions for Android and Windows are much easier to work with. They're much looser. Uh, so what you'll probably see is a single cross-platform solution made available for all platforms sometime in 2021. Uh, we've actually talked about making fiat on-ramps available as well so that you can use your fiat currency um, uh, to purchase OXT directly and make a custom account using your own OXT or to buy a pre-funded account with your bank card, for example. 
uh, but I can't I can't commit to what the end result will look like. It's it's definitely on the right radar, and I think you'll see it in 2021. Yeah, we're getting there. Uh, there was about a two month delay between the iOS beta and the full release being made available earlier this year. So you can probably look forward to a similar delay with Windows and Linux as well. Uh, I can't commit to a specific date, but hopefully that will happen before the end of March 2021. So sometime in the first quarter. There's a lot of testing happening internally, uh, and we have several community members also involved to help us catch edge cases that we're not running into within the team. Uh, they've been really great to work with. Uh, people like Salvatore, Zuni, Gomez. You, you might have seen these people in our Telegram group uh, if you've joined that. And, uh, and they've also been really patient running into bugs and helping us resolve them uh, or identify the root causes. So uh, they've gone through that slightly difficult setup process that you have identified uh, using the command line. Uh, they've been running updates, running speed tests, sending us the results and so on. Uh, the betas work pretty well right now, uh, but we did run into some bugs early on. So the community testing has been really valuable. But uh, yeah, again, hopefully before the end of March 2021, uh, the Windows and Linux clients will be generally available um, and um, we'll reach a lot more people, billions more people. Yeah, so nothing is perfect, but obviously this is kind of the whole point uh, of a VPN, at least for many people. Um, yeah, nothing's perfect, but we, we do feel Orchid is incredibly secure. Uh, two of the co-founders are two of the most respected technologists in the industry. Jay Freeman, also known as Sorek, one of the original iPhone jailbreakers and the founder of Cydia, uh, the first app store available even before Apple had their own app store. Uh, and also Brian Fox, an open source advocate and the creator of the Bash Shell, uh, who also worked at the Free Software Foundation for a period of time under Richard Stallman, who is often considered the father of the open source software movement. So uh, between them and uh, other developers on the team, focus on security throughout the software development life cycle is paramount. It's always there. Uh, the code is all open source, including the clients, the server software, and even the smart contract itself. Uh, the nano payments contract was audited by consensus diligence. And so far, no one has brought any serious app vulnerabilities or smart contract vulnerabilities to our attention, which we feel speaks to the level of scrutiny every line of code receives. Uh, Orchid was also recently reviewed by Ray Hodge at CNET, who tested for things like DNS and IP address leaks under very stressful network conditions, uh, several stories underground, a 0 0.7 megabit uh, connection back to his ISP, his wireless ISP, and, um, and nothing broke essentially. So on top of all of that, uh, creating an Orchid account does not require you to provide your name, your email address, uh, or any other personal information. You can create an account using a brand new Ethereum wallet and even fund multiple circuit hops using different wallets for maximum protection. So that if essentially no one knows where the money, the OXT is coming from, uh, and if you have three hops in your circuit, so your traffic goes through three different servers before getting to your destination, uh, that middle hop, that middle server has no idea where the traffic's coming from or where it's going to. It's completely blind. Uh, and it, has a, it could have its own wallet funding that traffic. So it, it's a really unique um, uh, way to do this and, uh, and offers a whole, a host of protections that a centralized VPN or even Tor uh, can't provide. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I, I'll reiterate on top of all that, nothing is perfect, but we have yet to encounter any trouble at this point. Yeah, there are all sorts of benefits to using Orchid and a blockchain for payments. 
uh, including the lack of personal information collected and shared. I mentioned earlier, uh, we don't have any credit card or debit card data attached to anything because we don't get it. Um, there are zero in-app analytics, which is incredibly rare. Almost every single app you use on, uh, especially on Android and iOS, but even uh, on your desktop or laptop has some sort of analytics built into it. Orchid's clients have none of that. Um, there's no logging. Uh, there's no logging on the, so on the, on the server. Back to the, to, to the blockchain piece, uh, to ensure everyone has access to bandwidth providers that they can trust, uh, Orchid has actually collected the best VPN providers all under one roof so that you don't have to choose. Uh, plus, we should eventually have thousands of individuals selling their excess bandwidth, which means you'll be able to select any number of nodes across a variety of cities and countries if everything goes the way we hope. Those nodes get registered to a smart contract and a curator. Uh, or you'll even be able to make your own curated list of servers instead of having to rely on others. So it's a really flexible protocol, uh, but with default choices that you can rely on. If you open up the app, you set up a, a hop, and you look at the configuration um, when you're setting it up or, or when you're managing it later, you actually see the, uh, the curator that it's pointing at is the default. Um, registered to a .eth um, uh, domain. You'll actually be able to make your own uh, or let's say uh, private internet access, really well-known company, NordVPN, ExpressVPN. They can actually use that similar, that, that same technology to register a bunch of their nodes onto Orchid's network and create the ExpressVPN curator or the NordVPN curator or somebody could collect a group of servers in Canada or in Korea or elsewhere uh, and put those all in a single curator so that um, we can replicate a lot of what's available now with a centralized VPN, a traditional VPN uh, app, uh, but also go way beyond that. So um, yeah, it's really, really cool. It's really uh, unique. And uh, like I said, you'll be able to make your own list. You can just have trusted servers that maybe you own, but you want to, um, use ORCID's uh, technology to manage all that. Uh, so thank you so much for hosting this. Uh, these were some really, really good questions from the community. And I always enjoy teaching people about what ORCID is, why it exists, uh, why it's important that ORCID exists, and really get people thinking about all these small, subtle ways freedom has slowly been taken away from us uh, basically ever since the internet was uh, commercialized. So there is too much infrastructure in the hands of just a few corporations. Uh, and ORCID is helping to re-decentralize the web uh, and internet so that we, the people who use this technology and need it most, have more control over it. There are lots of other great teams building other pillars that we will all benefit from, like decentralized DNS service, decentralized web hosting, storage, and way more. Orchid wants to make sure that you can access those services in a private manner so that you no longer have to provide a bunch of personal information like your name, your email address, your home address, credit card number, and so on to access those services. It's not necessary to give up that information anymore and Orchid is leading the way on making sure that you don't need to anymore. Anyang Korea, Gamse Hamnada, Sehe Bok, Mani Badu Seyo.